Welcome to 13 Minutes of Gig News in 13 minutes or less. So, no even playing around, guys. We're just going to go jump right in today. Um, so, we're going to run through a couple couple different things and some legislations to remember that May is coming and uh, May is when the Department of Labor's new rule goes into effect. Um, we, the people I connect with about this kind of stuff, we they, they'll tell you the same thing. Um, the mechanisms are in place in most states to adopt the DOL's um, rule change. Obviously, everybody's supposed to adopt it, but a lot of states have even gone as far as to put the mechanisms into place. So there is going to be some level of, you know, maybe not complete W-2 for everybody or unionization. So it's not like time to run to the, if you're a true IC and you want to work and stuff, you know, maybe not time to like go crazy, but um or anything, nothing's ending, but there's definitely some changes coming. And in some states, they're pretty huge. In some states, I don't see at all for the gig economy how they'll work. And uh, I think we touched on, I don't even have it on my docket for today here, but I think we touched on Connecticut last week. I hope we did because I'll just, as a quick recap, Connecticut um, legislation is pushing, pushing for $36 an hour. Um, for active time on all gig apps, plus a dollar thirty for all miles used on active time on gig apps, and plus tips. So you could be looking at upward of seventy seventy five dollars an hour. But to anybody who wonders, because I had a lot of people ask me, well, you know, how you know how is that going to be sustainable? Number one, it's not. <laughs> I mean, the only way it's sustainable is if the city and state and somehow all of that are going to help subsidize but they're also pushing i mean this is a push what you guys need to recognize is that this is a push for a w2 model in unions very that should be very clear um a push like that will come with um you know some some uh time to integrate so it's not like it will go to here's your schedule but it will move to a non-flex system um maybe like where you pick blocks and then during that block, this is some ideas that I know have existed before. It sounds like Connecticut wants this where you'll go in and you'll pick, you know, 50 hours of blocks that you can work a week. And then you have to go in, you have to work those blocks and then you have to um, be active during those blocks to get that, to me, it's just taking away what we need is the independence. Um, and no matter how you look at it, that's happening. Uh, you can find that Connecticut story on rideshareradio.com. Um, look for March 25th, I believe. That's when I posted it. So go take a look at that story about Connecticut. Um, I, I, I do want to quickly hit on this. I don't know if you guys are aware of this even, but there has, I'm sure if you live in New York, you know this. Um, in New York City, and other cities have looked at this too, there's been a ras uh, an order, a, a delivery cap, um, where the city said, hey, no more than, what is it, 23% in of an order in fees broken down, um, you know, how, however, however they want to break it down, processing, um, delivery fee, they can call it whatever they want, but there's a you can't go over 23% right now. That was, uh, that was, uh, put into place, I think in 2020. And then it was renewed again last year, but now they're going to be taking that out because what, and what ends up happening, you guys, if you're not aware, okay. So like Grubhub and DoorDash, for instance, they're in lawsuits with multiple States about this same thing. Um, you can't take, so when they said, okay, you can only charge 23% and they were going higher than that. Really what they did was just went back and revisited the contracts with each restaurant and said, okay, well, you know how we say that we mark up every, so we add our fees, but we mark up every item that you sell 10 to 20%. Okay. Now it's going to be 20 to 30% to help offset the, the cap they put on us at 23%. That makes sense. So basically they, this, New York put a cap on the on the companies about a delivery fee and they ended up taking it out on the businesses they work with so that it didn't come out of their end. So therefore hurting the businesses more. I have I gotta tell you guys, I've never been a fan. I think it's I think it's bull. I think it shouldn't be happening. 
the prices on a menu where you go to dine, or if that place has ever done like a carryout or delivery, I think that you'll notice that the prices are the same unless they ought like, okay, Domino's might be an example. Domino's might offer, an, if you come pick it up, you can get something for this fee. Other places might have a delivery fee. And I'm not talking about the apps. Um, but always the restaurant prices of the menu items are the same. And when you use these apps, they're not. All of the menu items are jacked. They're offset a bit. Some are like 2% and then others might be like 30. So it's it's so all over the map. They have a um, a schematic they use to do this to make sure that they're making the the most out of it, but I'm not a fan of that. I think that in that, and if you're going to, that made these companies go back in and say, okay, we're going to raise that even more. I mean, that really concerns me because I would, I would much rather see what I think the state needs to impose or the city should, should be imposing is something in the lines of, okay, look, here's instead of the 23%, um, you can charge whatever you want. DoorDash, Grubhub, go ahead, charge 50%. But you have to use the menu prices of the restaurants. You can't have little side deals going on with that because that seems a little too um, dirty. And like, okay, well, then we're going to have to raise the prices. It just seems like the businesses then that sell the food, yes, they could walk away. But we all know these apps could still be selling it. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes the businesses say no and they still do it. So that's not really a good deal. But they also shouldn't be dictating the prices of your menu items uh, to accommodate state laws and things like that. So I would say, just say, every every menu has to be what its menu item price is. So that on the, on the receipts that customers see, they see the total from the order from the restaurant prices. Then go ahead and charge all the fees you want, but you show it to the customer. You make sure to line item that. If you if they order $40 of food on DoorDash and it's going to cost them $82, you need to show them $40 for food and where the other $42 goes. And I'm not talking about the driver breakdown. I'm not a believer that they need to go that far because that's almost like revealing the books. But they do need to say platform fee, delivery fee, processing fee, whatever they want. And they need to line item that and show because the customer need, needs to not see, because right now they would see, okay, the the total on the $40 worth of food was $54. That's one way they offset it. So it's like, or $52 or whatever, whatever it might be on any given day on any given app. And so my point is, is like, if you roll that back to 40 to what it really is, now customers are going to really see the fees, and that's when they'll get in the faces of these companies. And since these companies aren't going anywhere, that's probably a good idea. Um, but moving on from that, uh, that that is being pulled. I'm glad to see that. I think that they need to either come up with a new plan or just stay out of it. Uh, the city of Harrisburg, Virginia, is bringing in their own rideshare services. They will be working... Um, same as the rideshare apps. You will call through the city. Um, city employees in city vehicles will be coming to pick you up. It will be a curb to curb, door to door service. They will have the right, right um, the correct amount of ATA vehicles. They will have vehicles with car seats. They will you you will call and say what you need, and you'll get it. It won't be like rideshare is right now. How will that pan out? I have no idea. This is the first time I've seen a city going after their own rideshare. I've seen them kind of team up with Uber or Lyft, but this is no teaming up. This is the city saying, you know what, let's put our own thing out there. So, um, yeah, I mean, make what you will of that. I think it's worth watching. Um, Delaware is also doing the same thing. They're starting with uh, the, what is it called, the Dart Connect, which is also in Texas, if you want to look into that and see what it's about. But they're going to start there, but then they're also moving to this Harrisburg uh, model where they're going to have city employees, city vehicles that come and pick you up when you call and order them. Same, and, and it says in the Harrisburg, Virginia area, there will not be longer wait times than 15 minutes. That is until 10 p.m. though. So like at 2 a.m. when the bars let out, then I'm not sure if this, in, in the beginning at least, if this, I couldn't find if this service will be provided or not. Um, I do know that, you know, from, I think it's 4am 
on uh, it said 4 a.m. to 10 p.m. They run from 10 to 6. It looks like they might not have this ride share going, but I think at that point they're thinking, okay, well that's the bar crowd or the night crowd, and they can figure out what they're doing because this is more for the necessity of getting to work or whatever, or even to stand out a little bit after work if you want, but keeping it somewhat in the controlled hours and the not puke hours. So, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, Delaware doing the same thing. Um, okay. Uh, let's see what I want to hit on most here. Okay. Let's, let's say this before I run out of time. Um, okay. Uh, gig workers in Seattle will be permanently entitled to paid sick leave and save time um, under a first-in-the-nation law signed by uh, Seattle Mayor Bruce Harrell on Wednesday. The measure expands pandemic-era protections and strengthens labor rights for app-based workers. Seattle previously allowed food delivery workers to accrue paid sick and safe time, but the policy was due to expire May 1st of this year, uh, six months after um, the end of the emergency order uh, was put into place um, to extend it from the pandemic era. The city council voted unanimously Tuesday to make it permanent on-demand gig workers on apps such as DoorDash, Postmates, Instacart, and et cetera. Um, a healthy, quote-unquote, a healthy workforce leads to a healthy community, and no one should have to choose between taking a sick day to care for themselves or their families and making rent. Um the measure expands into categories of workers uh, to cover food delivery, those who work for car wash, other apps, um, workers who set their own rates, such as those in the pet sitting apps, uh, will not be covered. So that's that's a weird stipulation. Even Prop 22 covered WAG, not Rover. That's weird. Um, but... The other thing about that you should know about this, you didn't hear me say rideshare, you didn't hear me say rideshare because drivers for transportation companies such as Uber and Lyft already earned paid sick and safe time through a state law that was signed into place by Jay Inslee, the governor, um, not too long back. So that's it, you guys. That's 13 minutes of gig news in under 13 minutes. Be back here next week. And uh, between then, got some other things going on. So check them out. Peace.